Amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, come on, say amen. 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 It's good to be in the house of the Lord. This morning we begin our services. And this morning we got Brother Daydream. And Daydream, we call him Daydream. Amen. Praise God. Amen. What an awesome choice. Amen. The decision that we made to be baptized today. And so we're going to do that. Let's see. Take me to the water.
on this Saturday. Also, next week, this third Sunday, uh, which will be, we will have our uh, Black History Program presented by our youth department. Amen. They have been all, they have already been working hard. They are ready, or still getting ready for that. And I'm trying to stay away from that. I don't want to, I want to be surprised when they present it on next week. And I know that it's going to be excellent. Amen. I know it's going to be great. Amen. 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 And before that, this we got a presentation on today, don't we? Amen. On next week, African attire. Third Sunday. Up here. And then, okay, dancers are rehearsing on Saturday also at at 12 o'clock noon. So, youth, if you're in the dance, uh, you know who you are. That person, they'll let you know. Saturday at noon, we will be, we will be rehearsing on here, up here at the church. Amen. Next Sunday, we are wearing African attire. Amen. So, uh, where the kente cloths and all that, all of the dashikis and whatever you got. Amen. Put it on on next week and that's coming. Amen. And worship God. Amen. Amen. Uh, I think I've got most of all. It was not. Praise God. Anyway. Amen. Amen. We got a Black History presentation today. Mr. Majesty is going to come and give us a Black History moment. Uh, come on, the best of for her as she comes. Amen. So, Jacob, here's a video for her presentation. I'm going to be reading about Ada Lloyd Sidwell Fisher. Says the Oklahoma Civil Rights Activist, she's an Oklahoma Civil Rights Activist, was born February 8, 1924, in Chickasha, Oklahoma, and she was an excellent student. She graduated from Lincoln High School in 1941 as valedictorian. Initially, she enrolled at Arkansas and AM College at Pine Bluff. After one year, she transferred to Langston University in September 1942, and she majored in English and geography in the water. On March 3rd, 1944, she married Warren Fisher. On May 21st, 1945, Ada Lloyd graduated from Langston University with honors. Ada was a key figure in the civil rights movement in Oklahoma. She applied for admission in the University of Oklahoma Law School in order to challenge the state segregation laws and to become a lawyer. Thank you. 
God. Amen. To our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To deacons and preachers. And to these ministry of young people. Bless you. Amen. Got a young man on the door. Amen. Bless you. You, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we have more today. Amen. 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 We don't get to walk around and feel sick this morning because you make eye contact with somebody across the room or something and just give them a nice wave. Instead of those that you can see them in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. It's so good to see everybody in the house today. Amen. Amen. And I don't, I don't want to uh, highlight too much, but my family, actually, we got some family, some new, a new member of the family that I haven't seen yet. Amen. And uh, he's back in the back, uh, all the way in the back row. Oh, my goodness. I knew it was to the Holy family. Amen. Got Brother Caleb and Ricky. Amen. God bless you. Uh, in the house today. Amen. 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 In the book of Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah. And it is born in here, isn't it? It's really born. It's really open for Amen. And my brother told you to open up the doors so and get some circulation coming through here. Amen. 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 Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 52. I want to read this from a, a couple of a couple of different translations. First being the New American Standard Bible. The second is one comes from the New Living Testament. The one on the screen is King James Version. Isaiah 52 and 6 says this from the New American Standard Bible. It reads like this. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore in that day I am the one who is speaking. Here I am. In the New Living Translation it says this. But I will reveal my name to my people. And they will come to know its power. Then at last they will recognize that I am the one who speaks to them. Amen. And the King James is up there on the screen. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that does speak. Behold, it is I. Father, we thank you, God, for your precious word. We thank you, God, for watching over us this week. Your grace and your mercy, Lord. We thank you, Father, for being our shepherd, guiding us, Father, leading us, God, through uh, the valley of the shadow of death, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your hand of protection that's been with us, Lord, all the days of our life. Lord, we just come and ask that you would speak to our hearts on today. Give us ears to hear your word, God. We do not want any of the attention, God. We want all of the attention on you and focused on you alone. For you alone, God, are worthy of the honor, glory, and praise. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, God, that secured our salvation. We're thankful for that awesome sacrifice on Calvary's cross, Father. Without that shed blood, Jesus Christ, our sin would not have been washed away. So we praise you for your son, Jesus Christ. We say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Have your way in this place. Yes. Have your way in us. Yes. Lead us, God, and change us, Lord, from the inside out. Yes. Men and women, boys and girls, Father, that, Lord, the world may know, God, that we are your children. Yes. God, we thank you, God, for the opportunity of having a, a second chance, a third chance, yes. a chance after chance after chance, God. Yes. Not, not because we've done it right, God. We have done anything right, God. It's only because of your grace. Yes. And so, Father, we pray, God, that we will take advantage of the time that you have given to us. 
Blessings on those, God, who may be sick and shut in, God. Your healing, God, would be with them. Just will we lift up even right now, Sister Benita Young, God. We pray, Lord, and we give thanks, God, because we already see your hand of healing at work. There's others, God, among us, Lord, who may be suffering, God, from sickness, God. We pray, God, that your healing hand would be with them. We know, God, nothing is impossible for you. And so our trust is in you and you alone. Now, Lord, just speak to our hearts. I pray for preaching all this clarity and power. Preach your holy and, and wonderful word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Give thanks of the church. Say amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. As you know, amen, we are uh, in this year of 2022. We have began uh, to claim this year as the year of promise. The year of promise. Uh, here at Jehovah's Missionary Baptist Church, and we are believing God to do, that God will do some uh, marvelous things, amen, in our midst, amen, and in your life, amen, as we lean and trust and depend more and more on him every day, amen, we know that God will come through uh, on his promises, amen, amen, let me give you one example, amen, which you can, you can see with your own eyes, even as I speak today. In the year 2020, we declared that it was going to be the year of the youth. Yeah. Little did we know that that little virus was going to hit this world, amen? Yeah. Coronavirus, and then knock us out of service, amen? Yeah. Right. We had claimed, though, we believed God that he was going to bring the youth, yeah. amen, back to us, amen, in the year 2020. But it didn't happen in 2020. Amen. But that is because once God speaks it, amen, right. his word does not return empty. Amen. All right. All right. It accomplishes what he said it's going to do with then before it comes back to him. And lo and behold, now church, if you have eyes to see, you see the Lord as doing and working his promise in Jehovah, amen, among our young people. Amen. 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 You can praise God. Come on, somebody. Amen. And he's raising up young people, amen, right before our eyes. Listen, when they had choir rehearsal uh, on last week, when they asked for volunteers, uh, they used to have to beg people to volunteer to lead the song. Amen. amen. But now when they say, who want to lead the song? Listen, they got to you know, have everybody raising their hand wanting to be a leader. Amen. Right. Amen. And that's just, a, that's just, uh, that's all praise to God. Amen. Our young people, two, uh, two young ladies who led services, uh, who sung our, uh, the young lady who sung our uh, devotion, amen. Uh, she's singing the song, I'm on the battlefield. Amen. Amen. We got to make them sing it, uh, working in the vineyard, amen. Amen. And so God is using our young people. It is, it's exciting, I don't know about you, but it's exciting to see, amen. It's exciting to see. And I know that they're going to do a great job on the next week. Amen. The youth department. We, we bless all of our workers who are working with our young people. Amen. Amen. Before we get into the word, Psalm 91, affirmation. Psalm 91, affirmation. Let's, let's say that together and then we'll get into this word. I'm sorry, but I almost forgot. Amen. Let's read together. Today, I am welcome in the shelter of the Most High. I am abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. I will trust the Lord, saying, He is my refuge, my fortress, and my God. Today, no harm will overtake me. No disaster will come near my home. I am protected by His angels in all my ways. Today, I am delivered because I have loved God. He will protect me because I acknowledge Him. I will call on Him. And he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. With long life, he will satisfy me and lead me. And let me see this salvation. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The promises of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 52 and 6. Says, Therefore, my people shall know my name. They shall know my name. What is this? in a name. What is it about the name? A name. What's in a name? Amen. There's a lot that you can tell from just a name. Amen. That you can read into just the name. Amen. If you said someone's name that was familiar to us all, 
we would all know, we would all know to ascribe some kind of quality to that person. Just by the name. Amen. Especially when we're talking about knowing God through his name. Hey, we're going to begin a series on called I Am. We're talking about the powerful names of God. A series that, that, that's going to, we're going to learn uh, the names of God. Not only that, amen, but we're going to learn how we can experience his power and authority through every name of God. Well, not every name, because this, this, we, we would not be able to, uh, amen, amen, find every name of God, amen. amen. But we're going to look at some, amen, and we're going to experience his power through his name, amen. Getting to know God by his name is more than just uh, learning a new word or discovering a new title that he goes by. Learning God by his name opens up the door of uh, knowing his character, uh, knowing it more fully and experiencing his power more deeply. Uh, can you imagine two people getting to know one another and love one another uh, without knowing each other's name? It can't happen, is it? Can't. You really cannot know or say that you love and understand somebody if you don't know their name. Amen. And so this is also true in our relationship with God. Uh, however, listen, many of us have not taken the time to get to know and love God and become familiar with the many names that he identifies himself with. In the Bible, in, in Scripture, God reveals himself to us through his names. So for us uh, to fully grasp the significance and power of God's name, we need to first understand the importance of his name uh, back in ancient culture. In the New Testament, in the Old Testament, uh, a name was more than just putting some, some letters together and making up anything that was trendy and just sounded nice. You know, that's how we name our kids now. Amen. Amen. You don't put no thought in it. Amen. We're just looking for a name that is trendy. Amen. Or something that don't it don't mean nothing. Amen. We just try to get uh, get get a name that nobody else has. Amen. We'll we'll name our son our, our daughter uh, Jeff, but we'll spell it a whole totally different way. Amen. Because it's just trendy. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. But in the Old Testament time, the name meant something more than that. The name is so important in biblical, uh, in a biblical setting and in our scriptures uh, that frequently God mentions himself. Uh, he'll, 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 when he uh, talks to people, he'll even change their name. You've read instances in the Bible where God changed somebody's name just to reflect a new reality about that person. For example, you know that Abram, Abel, exalted father, was changed to Abraham. Jacob, Jacob, whose name meant grabber of the heel or deceiver, he received a new name. That he wrestled with God, and his new name became Israel, which means which, which meant uh, one who prevails. Amen. And in the New Testament, we see Jesus telling Simon that you are Simon, son of John. But now you shall be called Cephas, which is Peter. Amen. And so in Scripture, a name meant something. Amen. Amen. When Jesus said in John 17 and 26, he said, I have made your name known to them and will make it known. When he said that, he was referring to more than just sounds uh, and putting the words together. Amen. In Jesus Christ, God came to earth in the flesh, and he exposed God's heart. He exposed God's mind and his character. He, he exposed God's being all through the revelation of his name. And so, my brothers and sisters, my hope for us as we go through these series of sermons and lessons is that you'll be introduced to God uh, as if it is the first time for you. Amen. Amen. Uh, that you'll get to know him like it's the first time through his name. Amen. It's my prayer that you will get to know him in ways that you haven't previously known him and come to know God more intimately. Does anyone want to know God more intimately? Anyone want to get closer to the Lord? Amen. 
Anybody want to experience God in a brand new way? Amen. I want to experience God in a brand new way. And listen, we can do that just by knowing his name. Right. I have some help here. Listen, right. I, I want to know him as LD. Amen, somebody. God, amen. The, the all powerful creator. I want to know him as a, a Adonai, amen. The God who rules. When I need a victory in my life, I want to know him as Jehovah Nisi, uh, the Lord's banner over me, his banner of victory. When I'm ill, when I'm sick and I'm not doing well, I want to be able to call on that name Jehovah Rapha, amen. The Lord, my healer. When I, when I need provision in my life, I want to know the name Jehovah Jireh. God the provider, amen. Brothers and sisters, listen, God has a name for every situation that we find ourselves in. We need to learn the name of God because when we know his character and his capacity, we will feel rest and we will discover peace and power in his care for us. Amen. And so we're going to embark on this journey of knowing the names of God. Amen. I'm going to give you just an introduction today. And then we're not going to pick up, but each Sunday we're going to pull out a name. We're going to talk about that name. Amen. Amen. We're going to talk about that. We're going to teach that name. Amen. All right. So that you will know, amen, when you go down in prayer, you'll be able to call on that God. And that name that is specific to your situation. Amen, somebody. You won't just be stabbing in the air, but you'll call on the Lord. Amen. When, it's, when you're in need, Lord, Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Amen. So, as we said before, names matter. Listen, names are so potent that, listen, parents will avoid. Now, you don't see nobody's child running around here with the name Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Nobody's going to name your child Hitler. Why? Because it has some negative connotations to it, right? But we don't want that attached to our, our babies. Amen, somebody. So, listen, uh, that's, how, that's how much names matter. Amen. Names matter so much. And some people even feel disrespected when somebody calls you by something that's not their own. When they can't pronounce your name. Some of you get mad and upset. Amen. Some of you just accept it. Amen. I know my wife is. I hear people try to call her name. They don't know her. And it's funny. They go all over the place. Takeda. Takeda. They can't say it. Amen. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Remember? Amen. But that's how we are. Our names are that important. We want them to say it right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Someone say my name. Yeah. 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 Right. But also, listen, we have to understand that a person can have a name and have and, and not have the quality attached to it. For example, if I take my name to LeBron James, I would not all of a sudden acquire LeBron James ability. Right. Amen. How many of y'all met names your son Jordan? Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 He's going to be the next Jordan. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I can't just change my name to Michael Jordan or something and then I'm going to get his attributes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, somebody. No matter what I think, I'm not going to be able to run like him. I'm not going to be able to jump like him. I'm not going to be able to shoot like him. Come on, somebody. That they amen, amen. just because I have it don't mean that the qualities are going to come with it. Amen. So the name does not contain any special power, but uh, when that name, the quality that it represents, then the result is powerful. It demonstrates the power of names. And much of that has to do specifically with God's name. God reveals uh, many of his names to us so that we can gain several different perspectives on who he is. Because this is one name alone cannot fully represent God's majesty and power. Are you hearing me? One name alone cannot fully contain everything that we need to know about God and who he is. Amen. And so I'm convinced that God wants us to know him more fully. He desires to be known for uh, all that he truly is. And when we get to know him, listen, when we, uh, when we understand and experience the depth of his goodness and power, then our hearts will be more open to worshiping him. Amen. Everything points back to him. Amen. Amen. The more you know about God, 
the more he reveals to you, amen, the closer you get, amen, the easier it is for you to worship him, the easier it is for you to hear him, amen, the easier it is, the more comfortable you get with calling on his name, amen, in every situation, amen, and we're talking about living our lives under his authority. The more you know about him, the more, amen, uh, the, the easier it is for you to put and place your life and live your life under his authority. So knowing God's name is critical to our understanding and application of, of, of the strength and the victory that comes through his multidimensional nature. That God wants us to come face to face with his significance and face to face with, and with his substance. But before that can happen, before we can do that, we have to know his name. Someone say, we have to know his name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, when you look throughout the Bible, we find that when God revealed a new aspect about himself, when he revealed a new character to his people, he often did it by revealing a new name. Amen. Amen. So, God has, again, he has a name that meets every situation that you and I may go through. Are you hearing? No matter what you're going through in life, God has a name specific for what you are going through right now. Amen? I don't care what it is. Amen? Whatever your present situation is, God has a name that fits it. Amen? That's how, that's how awesome he is. Amen? Amen. So, let's look at a couple of things. Amen? Today is the introduction, huh? And then we're going to pull out some names on the next and uh, on the following weeks as we get to present this series. When we look at his name, you know we notice that God's name is like a key that unlocks a treasure box. Scripture says this in Proverbs 8, 18, I'm sorry, Proverbs 18, verse 10. It says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in. And they are sick. The name of the Lord. Listen to that scripture. The name of the Lord is a strong child. When, the, when we get in trouble, we run to the name. And we're saved. How do you somebody? His name is a safe place. Praise God, somebody. It's a fortified place where we can find freedom, amen, safety, and security, peace. God is so awesome that his name, uh, his name, uh, again, is for, every, is, is for anything that you are facing, amen? And his name communicates specific attributes or characteristics of God that can strengthen and empower you in your situation. When we discover his name, uh, the, the name that applies to your situation, then you'll fully understand his privilege in our lives. Because we get that from his name. We're drawn from the name. We run into that name, and we are saved. Amen, somebody. Psalm 8 begins with the well-known and often quoted phrase, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The name of God, it reveals his intrinsic, in, in, intrinsic, what's that word, majesty, his glory. Oh, Lord, join your name in yes, all the earth. Yes, it is. His name is nothing short of pure majesty. Come on, man. Amen. Amen. Maybe that's why they named you. Maybe that's why they got your name, majesty. Amen. No. It's a biblical name, majesty. God's name reveals his majesty. Amen. Discovering and experiencing the manifestation of his name in your life will usher you directly into the presence of our majestic is your name. He doesn't just say, God, I know your name. Amen. But he said that his name is excellent. It's majesty. Amen. It's majestic. Amen. It's like he's saying that the listen, the earth is just too small. To contain your beauty. Yeah. That's how excellent it is. Amen. Amen. We say, Lord, how excellent it is in all the earth. Amen. Who has said his going above the heavens. All right. The earth cannot contain it. Glory. Who you are. Come on, somebody. Amen. Play this slide, amen. 
spirit. Have you ever looked outside? Maybe you've been on vacation before and you've just been at awe at the scenery. You look out your window or whatever, or maybe you're driving on the road. And you look and you just see, oh, this is beautiful. It's like God, this finger has just painted the sky. Amen, somebody. But that's his splendor in his majesty. Amen, somebody. Psalm so David responded to God's creation by saying, When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what is it? What is man that you have thought of him? That's God doing this. When I consider the work of your fingers, not your hand, just your fingers. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Oh, you don't need to do everything. You can just do these fingers to operate. But when I consider the work of your fingers, listen, I think about why, why the world do you even think to care about little old me? When I see what you can do. But he cares about us. That's why you can praise God. If he can do all of that, just imagine what he can do for you. Imagine what he'll do for you. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. So David, he just looked up and he was at all with God's creation. When he, when he recognized the majesty of God's name, he forgot about his own problem. Are you hearing me, church? When you discover the majesty of God's name, you get lost in his glory. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. And you forget about your little small problem. Yes. Come on, somebody. That's why maybe he said, I'll look into the hills. Yes. When I can look to the hills, then I forget yes. about all of my little small problems. Yes. Come on, somebody. I, I can see how big my God is when I look at the work of his fingers. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Maybe that's how Isaiah put it when he says, Amen. When he saw the splendor of God's glory, he just looked at himself and said, woe is me. When I compare what God is, when yeah. I compare what I am, listen, yeah. <laughs> ain't nothing too hard for my God. I told you, right? Yeah. So whatever you're going through, yeah. listen, you need to remember God's name, amen, and experience, we experience his majesty and his glory through his name. Yeah. If he can create the heavens and the earth, the stars and the moon, then, the grass of the field, the animals of the field, amen. In seven short days, guess what? He can do so much more for you and I. Our creator. Amen. And so we discover his majesty, amen. We'll figure out that our problems is nothing for God to handle. Whatever you want, your problem ain't nothing for God to handle. You can solve some of his work, amen, somebody. Amen. It's nothing. Psalm 511. Psalm 5, 11 says, but let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy and may you shelter them that those who love your name may exalt in you. Those who love your name will be joyful in you. The New Testament, Jesus teaches us that God often discloses his awesomeness, his excellence, and splendor to those who have a childlike heart. They are the ones given the eyes to see God's majesty. So Jesus said in Matthew 11 and 25, he says, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligence and have revealed them unto the babe. You want to see God's majesty, you got to get out of yourself. And become like a, a, become a child in his presence. When's the last time you just sat in God's presence and was just at all? At who he is? You became a child in his presence. Child of, children are so innocent when they come to you. Amen. Amen. They're, they're curious. Wanting to know why. Why? Have y'all y'all had children, the children that hit that wide stage and no answer is in satisfying them? No matter what you answer, the next one is well, why? Amen. And you just get you get so many answers out by the time that you get to that point, the fifth one, you say, oh, because I said so. <laughs> okay. Children are so they are so innocent. 
and they want more. They want to know. They want to know. Amen. When they sit in your presence, amen, they, they just want you to love on them. Yeah. They, feel comfort, they feel comfort and secure yes, when they are with you. Yes, sir. Amen, somebody. Yes, sir. And Jesus says, listen, he's hidden these things from those who think they intelligent. Yeah. Amen. Right. And why? And he has revealed, God reveals his majesty and his glory to those who are infants, who are babes. Amen. Amen. In Psalm 8, in that same chapter that we have, he says, from the mouth of infants, in verse 2, from the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength. <laughs> infants and babes, they represent people who recognize their dependence on God. Yes, Lord. They are those who are Amen. Who are not so impressed by their own abilities. Yeah. They're not impressed with their own wisdom. Amen, somebody. That they can't Amen. see God's yeah. wonder yeah. anymore. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I was looking at someone uh, who preached a couple of weeks ago, Ron. Amen. It was Miles Monroe, one of, one of his old videos. Amen. And he was like, he got all of these degrees on the wall. Amen. But he said he don't even he don't even pay attention. No, he takes them down. He don't want to, he don't even want to be reminded that he has become a doctor, or had a master. He don't want to even be reminded of that stuff because that stuff happened yesterday. Amen. And if he gets too caught up in that, Amen, he'll he'll miss what's coming next. Some of us get so caught up in what we have accomplished that we are no good for the next. Are you hearing? me? Amen. Just because you made it to this mark, amen, that's not the end. What's the next mark? I graduated thanks to that. There's so much more after that. And so we have to get, we have to drop who we are. That's why the Bible teaches us that we ought to die daily to self. Amen. We're going to follow Jesus Christ. We have to die daily to yourself. Amen. Because God has something to do, amen, every morning. Amen. He gave me bread and mercies every morning. Amen. amen. So what's next? Amen. What's new? Amen. amen. So listen, if you believe that you've got it all together, or if you think that your name has got you where you are, and you got it going on, and you made it to the top, then listen, you're likely not going to experience the power of God's name in your life. Because the majesty of God is revealed for those, is reserved for those, who have enough sense to know that they don't they don't know much at all. Amen. I'm going to show you pictures of what God can do. And you put your knowledge against that knowledge. Amen, somebody. Amen. You see what God can do. Now tell me what you can do. What can you create? Just from the just from speaking it. What have you spoken to existence? Oh somebody. You may, have, you may have spoken to some people, amen, some bad things on some people. Yeah. 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 God's majesty. Yeah. We got to forget about ourselves. Let me hurry and finish. Because listen, you can't know his name until you forget your own name. All right. All right. You can't depend on his name until you stop depending on your name. Yeah. You cannot experience the power of his name until you relinquish the false power of your name. To know God's name is to experience his nature. And that level of intimacy is reserved only for those who are humble, amen, and who depend on him. Amen. Amen. Someone say, we have to depend on him. We have to, we have to humble ourselves and depend on God. And because, listen, God is not going to share his glory with, with nobody. Amen. 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 You know who got in trouble for that already, right? He's not going to share his glory with anybody else. So we have to humble ourselves if we really want to know him. We have, uh, we have to realize our insignificance before we can recognize his significance. That comes only through knowing who he is. Does anybody want to know who Jesus Christ, who God is? Who God is? You want to know who to die for your sin? You want to get to know that? That that man more that that person even more, Amen. You want to experience him moving in your life, Amen. Moving has come to light in your life. I want to get to know that God. Come on, somebody. Amen, Amen. I want to recognize His significance in my life. Because listen, we're to bless God and we're to bless Him alone. We're to worship His name and worship His name alone. 
We are to praise his name and praise his name alone. We're to glorify his name and his name. We're to magnify his name and his name alone. We are to lift up his name and his name alone. Jesus says, if I be lifted up. Amen. We want to see a movement of God and we want to see people running back to the church, running back to Jesus Christ. We got to lift up the right name. Amen. That's why, listen, when you invite people to come and come to your church and be a part of what's going on at your church, don't tell them, come and hear my pastor preach. You let it up the wrong name. All right, all right. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Oh, the bread, bread can't draw nobody. Yeah. <laughs> come on, somebody. Yeah. Lift up the name of Jesus. That's how we draw, amen. Yeah. Come to my church and talk. Listen. Jesus is being revealed at my church. We're learning the names of God in my in our church. Come on, somebody. Jesus says, if anyone is thirsty, they come to me. Come to me. I don't have nothing for you to drink. Amen. What I give you, I'm giving you from, the, from Jesus Christ. Amen. He's feeding me. I'm going to feed you what he gives me. But the bread you have cannot draw me in. Right. Right. You can't draw me into the Lord. Amen? Right. Only the name of Jesus Christ. Right. And that's why we're going to learn some names of God. Amen? Yeah. Because listen, I want us to experience everything <laughs> there is about his name. Yeah. Amen. So when you go at home, when you get home, and when you get on your knees to pray, Amen. You'll call on that. Lord. You'll call on that Jehovah Jireh. You'll call on Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Satan. You'll call Amen. On Elohim, you'll call on uh, uh, Adonai. Amen. You'll call on Jehovah. Amen. You'll call on all of the names of God. Whatever situation that you're in. Amen. And we're going to put banners up. Each week when we call a new name, we're going to have that banner on that name. We're going to have until we get every name up on this wall. Amen. And a reminder. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's just bow. Father, we thank you for your name. Father, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Yes, it is. Righteous ones in, good, and we are safe. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Yes, Lord. Father, there is no name given unto me whereby we can be saved, but by the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. For your name. Yes. We have to get to know all there is, Father. Lord, Lord. But Father, we pray that you would reveal, God, your majesty. Reveal your glory, God, as we learn more and more about you. Yes. And as we learn more, God, and more about Father, we'll trust God more in you. Our faith will grow because our faith grows by hearing your word. That the Father, you begin to change us from the inside. That on the outside, men and women, boys and girls, will see that we are your disciples. And that you will get the glory, God. So, Lord, as we embark on this journey, God, bless us. Open our ears to hear you, God. Even, God, when we study your word this week, we pray that you would bless us with your understanding and wisdom. And we thank you, God, that you would do that. I pray for my brother and my sister, God. That they would, God, be to know you in a, in a, in a new way, God. That they would begin to call on your name every single day. For your name is great. Your name is greatly to be praised. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There may be one that's in the church today. You have to never given your life to Jesus Christ. You've never asked him to come into your heart. Today's a great day to receive him as your Lord and Savior. Amen. If you, uh, if you uh, would like to receive him as your Savior today, if you ask him into your heart, confess with your mouth, believe that he is the, the, the Son of God, that he died for your sin, that he rose with all power in him. You believe that he did all of that for you. The Bible says that you are saved. If you would like to receive that salvation, just wait your hand. I'm going to pray with you before we leave today. 
Praise God. Maybe you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you've never been baptized. You've never been in the water. Amen. We offer that opportunity for you today to be baptized on the second Sunday of March. If that's you, just wave your hand, amen, and we'll schedule that for you to be baptized. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Maybe you're looking for a home church. Amen. If you don't have a home church, we open up our doors for you to be a, become a member here at the Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Again, we're not a perfect church. Amen. But we are just trying to be who God wants us to be. Amen. And we're doing that by learning His Word and trying to live it out in our lives. If you leave the church and to help you do that, amen, we welcome you as a member of the Hope. Just wave your hand at and we'll receive you, amen, even on today. We praise God, amen, amen. Father, we thank you, God, for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. God, we just thank you, God, for the one to be baptized on next month. We're, we're so thankful, God, because you, God, you're doing as, you, as your word said, Father. Your promises are true. And we see them, Father, and we say amen to your promises. So, God, thank you, God. Bless my brother, bless my sister, bless their homes on this week. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come their way. Keep them safe. Let Psalm 91 be effective in their lives this week, God. We thank you, God. You are Lord. You are our protector. You are Jehovah Nisi, the banner around us, the banner of victory, God. So we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you the glory. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen. You are dismissed, ready to go home. We praise God for you. Careful this week. Amen. We pray to see you on next.